Here, I will be discussing Black Sabbath's use and development of intervallic devices. Before moving on to illustrate something of Black Sabbath's unique and innovative use of intervals, I will cover some essential background first. An interval in music is the distance between two consecutive or adjacent notes, and they are the building blocks of melody and harmony. The contour of a melody or guitar riff is formed when sequences of intervals flow from one to another. This means that the selection of intervals when composing music is important in defining the overall impression and mood. There are two basic types of interval, consonant intervals which are easy on the ear and dissonant intervals which are often used to create tension. However, when dissonant intervals are combined with multiple consonant intervals, as in a major seventh chord for example, they can produce colourful exotic impressions. In Western tonality, each interval also has a theoretical name according to its position in the major scale, and the basic principle of this is straightforward. For example, the distance between the first note of the scale and the second is known as a major second, and the first to the third is known as a major third. The fourth and fifth degrees are known as perfect intervals, and they are followed by the major sixth and major seventh. The eighth degree is known as a perfect octave. It becomes more complex, however, because each of those basic intervals can be altered by raising or lowering the upper note of the pair in half-tone or semitone increments. Using popular music terminology, an interval that is lowered in pitch becomes flat. For example, a major second becomes a flat second, and a perfect fifth becomes a flat fifth, and so on. An interval that is raised in pitch becomes augmented. For example, a perfect fourth becomes an augmented fourth, and so on. The musical scene of the late 1960s, the one from which Black Sabbath emerged, was blues and blues rock. Both forms of music are largely consonant in terms of intervallic sequences, but the frequent use of the blues scale, which contains both a flat fifth and a flat seventh, does, in theory, add elements of dissonance to the music of this genre. However, the tension created in blues-based melodies is always resolved. This is a musical description and process which accords with the rules of consonance, whereby a dissonant note is followed by a consonant note to dissipate the piquant effect. For example, in blues-based music, the flat fifth is used to colour the sound, and most often fits between his next-door neighbours in the scale, the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth. Here is the blues scale in A. A good practical example of a riff based on the blues scale is found in the opening of Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. Came Black Sabbath in 1969 and set about creating a new image and style of music, a new genre was born. In order to create music that reflected and enhanced the themes of Hammer Horror and Anti War found on Black Sabbath's first album, Tony Iommi and the rest of the band adopted the use of unresolved dissonance and angular lines, which is where melodic lines or riffs feature significant, numerous, or consecutive wide intervals. Two intervals in particular became the cornerstone of Sabbath's key numbers during that time. The flat second, which sounds like this, and the flat fifth, which sounds like this. The flat fifth is more commonly known as a tritone, and its unresolved use has been used by composers for many centuries to create impressions of evil and tension. In fact, the tritone's more common name, Diabolus in Musica, the Devil in the Music, is loaded with connotations of evil. However, the original application of this label was more likely due to reasons other than for its visceral effect. So, Iomi was breaking new ground in adopting these significant intervals and using them in the context of what was to become heavy metal. 
and it is the first two tracks on the first album that are representative of this bold new approach in writing and performing. Track 1, Black Sabbath, is constructed for the most part from repetitions of unresolved slow-paced tritones. Here the root note is G, followed by an octave, followed by the tritone. And on the album track sounds like this. Further on, Iomi develops the theme by adding power chords and trills. And so on. Track 2, The Wizard, features the use of an unresolved flat second in the verse riff. Here the root note is A, and the riff uses power chords. Having established the singular use of those intervals, it was a natural progression to combine them in various forms, and it was this process that informed many of Sabbath's iconic tracks, and subsequently of the heavy metal genre. For example, the central riff in Children of the Grave combines tritones and flat seconds in the following way. Here's the riff first of all. <laughs> So the tritone is actually heard between the root note, which is there, and there's the tritone. And it's the fact that uh, the tritone is heard at the end of the phrase. The beginning of the phrase has the root notes, which is held for two beats. And then the tritone there at the end is held for two beats. So the tritone is emphasised within the riff even though there's other things going on. The interval that precedes the tritone is the flat second. And the flat second is also heard at the end of the second phrase. So we've got a multiple use of the tritone and flat seconds in the whole riff, which I'll play for you again. Likewise, the opening theme of Symptom of the Universe contains a similar structure. Here's the riff. So the first half of the riff is a straightforward tritone. The second half of the riff, the tritone is preceded by a flat second. So when it all goes together, this is what we hear. There's the tritone. It is clear then that the very distinct synergy of wide leaps and flat seconds in the compositions of Black Sabbath became a major point of stylization, and, as mentioned earlier, is evident in the writing of key metal bands from all subsequent decades. Enter Sandman by Metallica, for example, draws on and combines those techniques. Here's the main riff. <laughs> Here's the verse riff. So in the main riff you can hear the tritone. Here's the root note, which is an E. Plays a power chord, followed by an octave. Then the tritone is heard. And then a flat.
flat second. I went put together. The verse riff uses a flat second, and that interval is featured as a major part of the riff. In Ruin by Lamb of God, those same techniques are still evident over 20 years later, and the effect is just as visceral. tone, so here's the root note, in this case D, followed by the tritone, and the tritone is preceded by a flat second, and in the second riff we can hear uh, more flat seconds and wide leaps, creating that angular effect that we were talking about. My discussion of Black Sabbath's unique contribution to the emergence of heavy metal continues on the third audio presentation where I discuss their unique use of downtuning. <laughs>